If I say isometric perspective, there's a good chance you know what I'm talking about. Games that were in a three quarters point of view looking down that allowed games to have a 3D environment before 3D games were even possible. I really, really love uh, isometric perspective and I'm gonna be making a lot of it in the next like few months or so. So I thought it'd be good to really get into the weeds of what it is and what problems it's trying to solve. So first, let's start with like what the problem with 3D even is. The first is one uh, is a problem that you already know. It's called parallax. If you ever took like a car trip or a train ride and you look at the window, you will have noticed that things close up are really whizzing by. Things further away move a lot slower. And then you have things like the moon that look like they're not even moving at all. So the second problem is uh, one that you're familiar with if you're an artist uh, is called foreshortening. It's the fact that this kind of difference in size also applies to the different sides of a singular object. So if you take a cube, right, and this cube is facing the camera directly, the face that you see is going to look like a square. But now let's start to rotate it. The edge that's closest to the camera is going to appear bigger and the edges that are a bit further away are going to look a lot smaller. And so the faces don't look like squares or even rectangles anymore, they look like trapezoids. You'll also notice that the, the angles of, of the top and bottom edges meet up at two different points that are on the same line. The, the line is called the horizon line and the different points are called vanishing points. I'm going to come back to that later, so keep it in mind. The main issue with foreshortening is the fact that every individual object is going to be foreshortened a different way depending on where it is in relation to the camera. There is no way of baking the perspective into the illustration and then just move it around and expect things to move the way they would in a 3D environment to expect parallax to be respected. The job of the camera is to turn that 3D and project it into 2D. But that needs to be done in real time. That needs to be done every frame. But in the days of the NES or the SNES, that was impossible to do. The machines just weren't powerful enough. There's a really good video about this that by Junferno that I'll link up there and also in the description. Okay, so you have these two problems. What do you do about them? You have two solutions. One, give up. It's always an option. You can just do a, a side view and then have the background be in layers and the different layers move at different speeds depending on how close or how far they are from the foreground. That way, you don't have 3D, but you keep parallax. But you have another option. If you don't want parallax, but you want to keep the 3D, remember the vanishing point from the cube earlier? Because the camera is looking down, the horizon is in the distance, you ditch the horizon line. And what you do is you take your vanishing points and you push them infinitely outwards until the perspective lines that radiate out of them end up looking and eventually being parallel. Then you have something called a parallel projection. The nice thing about that is that when you have a parallel projection, a parallel perspective grid, is that it looks the same everywhere. If the player moves one way, you move the entire environment the other way, and it doesn't matter because the perspective grid looks the same everywhere, in every direction. There are different kinds of parallel projections, and isometric is just only one. And the way you make these different kinds, if we zoom in, we have three the three axes. You also have the one going down. The one going down you're not going to change because down is always going to be in the same direction. But the other two, you can move them around. Like, remember, you, we still have those perspective lines on the edges that you can move around and they will change the angles that you are working with. Isometric is when these three angles are the same, right? So if we take a cube, uh, it's gonna look like a perfect hexagon with the point that's closest to the camera and the point furthest from the camera being exactly aligned. And that's typically not what pixel art looks like. The main problem with pixel art is that you wanna keep your lines clean. If you take any old random angle, the line is gonna be pretty jaggy, right? You're gonna have a, a segment of two pixels and then one and then two and then one and then one and then two and then one. And it's gonna be, it's gonna look jaggy and we actually call these jaggies in pixel art. There are ways to avoid them, there are ways to make them look a bit better, but if you're building an entire perspective grid, you want the lines to be somewhat clean. But that means that you can't really do any old angle you want, and isometric requires 30 degree angles or 120 degree angles, those are the same, and you just can't do those. So what you do is you approximate it. We typically use two pixel segments uh, for both of the axes that go in this way. So what you end up with is an angle of, I believe, 127 degrees and two angles of a 117 degrees. So when you have two angles that look the same and the third one, which is typically the top one that looks 
slightly different, that's called a diametric perspective. It's like you're looking at it still 45 degrees on the side, but not quite 45 degrees up. You're looking at it slightly from a slightly lower perspective. Diametric projections are the ones that are used in most pixel arts because again, it looks better because it's not jacky. Another one that I'm really, really interested in is trimetric perspective. And that's when you have the three angles that are different. I really like the way that looks. I'm really interested in trying to see if there is a way that you can have that be done cleanly in pixel art. So I'm, I'm going to try that sometime in the near future. You also have a few really weird ones. If you ever made this cube in the margin of your books, that's cavalier projection. And finally, there is also military projection. And that's just terrible. That's just bad. But generally, I found parallel projections to be a really neat solution to what was at the time a real problem. You just couldn't have 3D graphics. And so if you want an environment that's a bit wider, if you, if, especially if you make games that are a bit more about the environment, Civilization was in isometric perspective, most RTS games, Diablo, SimCity, all those games were in isometric because they require um, a bit more space, are less about the individual characters and more about the world that you evolve in. I think that's going to be it for this week though. I hope that was instructive. I hope that was, I don't know, maybe useful. If you're somewhat interested in pixel art, I make a video every week. So yeah, I'll be back next week with another time lapse of uh, like a Digimon background in isometrical perspective. So in the meantime, take care. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.